Hi guys, Cliff here. Welcome back to part two of the Fokker Triplane Dancing Wings DR1 build. Um, I'm going to start now with the fuselage. I've sorted out a few of the bits and um, <laughs> I've just been spent half an hour looking for the rest of this circle. <laughs> I thought it's not in the kit, but because that's the way the writing stamped on the firewall. I thought, well, there's another half to make it up, but it doesn't. That goes vertically and that's the bottom where the battery tray fits on and all sorts of stuff. So quite pleased to find that I haven't lost a piece, but what a waste of time. Anyway, welcome back to part two. Uh, I'll bend you down and you, I've got to, uh, let me bend you down. The first job is to uh, laminate up some components I found. I found the, the main bits to get me started. Thing to remember on this is make handed parts as you're gonna have trouble trying to get it all to go together. I'm gonna use white glue, I'm gonna weigh it down and work out the blind nuts because there's a little uh, problem with the, well not problem, but challenge with the blind nuts and that is the fact that they're a little bit too long and they stick out past um, the surface that's going to be where the um, I'm not explaining myself where the undercarriage this slot the undercarriage fits up into but because the blind nut's a little bit sticking out a bit you wouldn't get it up so I've just got to either pack out the back of this um, these doublers so it's a blind that doesn't stick through or I um, cut a little bit off the blind nut. Now I could cut a little bit off the blind nut with my angle grinder if I hadn't have loaned it to my daughter. Yes, daughters use angle grinders. <laughs> At least mine does anyway. Mine do, both of them. So that's going to go on there. So. Um, it might be easier. I've got a Dremel, but blind nuts are quite big. I could mount it in the vise and saw a bit off, but I quite like the idea of using a bit of wood. So maybe I'll use wood, drill a little bit of hole in it, make sure these slots are nicely aligned. So it's got quite a fast grab this white glue, so I haven't got time to mess about really. And the other thing you need to glue together is these doublers. Make sure your little things are out. Okay, I've got this massive, massive fuselage down. I'm going to build it um, one side at a time with the formers and doublers and what have you. Um, so I was saying to you about Rob ground down the nuts. I've stuck on a piece of scrap ply from one of the centers of the um, other parts. And that thickness is just about right. Well, it's just under, which is perfect. So I thought there's no point in drilling a hole. I'll just stick it on, and that hole needs to be opened out ever so slightly anyway. So I'll drill a hole right through, and then glue those nuts on the inside. And I'll do that before I stick the doublers on. They go down here somewhere. I'll glue this together with CA, and then I'll put the doubler on with white glue. That is right, like that. Looks pretty good. Just give that a little press. I'm going to weigh it down. Like I said, we'll use that former to make sure everything is nice and square and lined up. Okay, let's just get it weighted down. That will do. So while that's drying, I'm going to work on these, uh, getting these blind nuts into these pieces here. So I've just filed the holes a little bit bigger in the back of these now so I can put these studs in. Um, captive nuts I should say but the easiest way of doing it is just to pop it in a vise and wind them in 
like that. And the little prongs go all the way in. Take it out, have a look. And it, I didn't want it to come past the face of that, and it hasn't. That piece of 1 was plenty, but that's the easy way to get the nuts in. Um, what I'll do now is just run a load of CA or and or epoxy over the top. I wouldn't put any in there because you're going to get it in the thread. I'm going to glue these on here and the top one on there and that covers up. I have put on some glue in here and sanded it, put lots of sawdust in there from the top. So that's, but then there's this one goes over the top again, which was going to strengthen that join up. So how do we position these? Well, just use the formers F2 and F3 in this case. I'm not going to glue the formers in yet. So that will locate there. The back of that locates in there. That comes down there and you've got an equal gap along the top. And then F2, this one here with the big cutout, that goes over there, in there like that. Pushes up tight so you're left with an equal amount of wood along the bottom. Flush with the front. I can't line up with the front because of the curve. So. As long as it lines up with the front there and it's equal along there and there's little cutouts at the bottom or uh, well, everything's equal you should be okay okay so what I'm going to do now I'm going to place this f2 3 and 4 in position like this and I'm going to start with f4 work my way forward and I'm going to glue them in with CA and then I shall run some white glue up the joins. Let's get a few bits in to start with. I'm going to glue this into this now. Middle one. On there. Peg on that. And on the this end it's such a tight fit everything has to be exactly lined up in its slots I've joined this side everything's drying nicely it's ready to offer up this side the plan is to put it together again with CA and then go over all the joints I've gone over all the joints look at that straight in gone over all the joints with CA, uh, sorry, white glue on this side, so it's just a matter of doing the same when this is all in. Instead of fitting the rear formers, I thought I would fit this front one and let it dry overnight. Just going to mark that up, Let's put some more around it anyway. This is just to make sure everything's covered. Okay, here we go. Use large F1 fitment. Isn't it amazing how it goes in perfectly before you put the glue on? There we go. There we go. There we go. Check all around. No, it's popping out. No, it's in. It's in. Yep. Okay. Let's put some weights in there. Right. We'll let that set and have a look at it in the morning. Cheers, guys. All right. I'm just putting in these rear formers guys um, I put um, what have I done yeah it's all set from last night I put a rubber band on the back just to hold it together might be a little bit on the tight side though put a slightly weaker one in so far these are going in look at that just sort of clip into place fantastic I know Rob had a problem with the bottom of F7, I think it was buckling. This is very thin formers, so Rob put um, quarter inch square cross, me cross members in, which I'll obviously discover the same problem, so I'll have to do the same. Right, I've located F11, 316 pulsar, and that will go right in the back there like that. It's got slots in it for the rudder hinges as well. I'm not sure what hinges I'm going to be using yet though, so 
I'll have to wait to see on that. The two triangular pieces are notched and fit in from the bottom and top. So. See, I have a feeling it says there F14, which is a bit that goes on the inside of that because it needs more wood in there for the hinge. Found F14 quite quickly, had to be in a thicker piece of balsa. There it is, look, in there. So we'll have that one out and uh, get it in. That goes in. There. Considering there's own, this is the hinge is all that holds the fin stroke rudder on. I'm going to replace that with a much thicker piece of wood, guys. There we are. There we are. So now we got some decent wood in there for a hinge. I can safely put the bottom piece on which was a bit there and glue the other piece in from the top. So that will just clip in there like this. It's a good idea to assemble all this while everything's still a little bit on the wet side, just to make sure everything pulls in nice and true. I know tail weight is um, being added here, but I don't want it to fall apart just for a little bit of glue. For the airplane that goes on the inside as a extra bit of strength there, so I'll put that in. More weight in it. See if I can get that down there. Start in there, drop it forward, clip in that bit, look at that, oh, look at that. Okay, I'm going to put the stringers on, they're pretty much cut to length, I just offered them in and they look quite good. So, okay. Check that one for straightness okay guys welcome back I've stuck on the center wing uh, screw connections and little gubbins and also the little pieces that make up the mountings for the undercarriage so now I'm going to have a go at the side cheeks so that's these great big bits here and the little half sections. That's a bit of fun. This goes up here somewhere uh, like, like that. I don't know where this fits together. That goes in there like that. And then these pieces here Starting with two, we'll go in there. Okay, a fair bit one way. Look at that. Lovely, lovely. And that's then you put the stringers on the outside of that. I'm going to work my way around all this guys and come back to you in a minute, put on the side strips, extended this one, scarf joint, remember the top one's short, did a little scarf on that. Um, this is important to show you guys, bottom wing retainers, RF31, there's M6 which is the outer one here, then there's M31 which is the inner one here, so you've got a 
tab on there to go in there like that. That's got to be level with the top there, I think. Not level with the top of that. It's got to be down a few millimetres, same as that side. So I'm going to glue these together and put a packing piece on the back and press the blind nuts in. And when I've done all that, I'll see you again. I'll be back. I've epoxied the lower wing bolts or oh, nuts I should say in place blind nuts I'm going to put the magnet holders on after I've glued this in place I can get my hands in there easily and that means I can glue it in nice and tight to the uh, um, base of this as well so but I'll put the front one in and now this goes on there I've offered it up obviously the holes got to line up with those and the rest is just a matter of running some glue in there and dropping it in so that's what I'm going to do now run some in sir I must say everything's fitting really well on this kit except this piece of front wood that I've just fitted it was a, it was a millimeter short each side I've just put a bit of millimeter ply on just to take up the gap just there where I'm gluing Now, what's the best way keeping this together and on? Uh, clamps. And then I'll run some super glue around the back here. Just putting on F0. Just run some CA in there. CA these two. It's going to be the sheeting that really strengthens all this up. I just have to be very careful glued in the magnet holders on that. I'm slightly concerned that there's such a big gap. Oh, it's probably where the bottom bar slides in actually. So that gap needs to be there. Put on these side pieces and then the little piece of bolster that goes on the inside. Um, can't tell you the number, but really easy to fit. I just super glued along pop that on and then just brought, brought that across super glued it and then the balsa bit it's side grains so was very easy to bend I did damp the end bit so as it would just go around this corner a bit um, it's got one flat edge one curved edge flat edge against the fuselage pushed it on put it in place and to trim the end slightly um, I just held it there and just CA'd it all around inside and out and it's really solid so that was easy I did have to relieve both sides actually this middle slot ever so slightly no biggie and the other thing I've done is to put on the um, F0 um, I've, I put these bits on yesterday I think that's on the last bit of video but I've added the um, four mil square and I, that's the other this former doubler I put on as well and as Rob pointed out in this video there's it doesn't sit on perfect there's a sort of a ridge here where your piece of 16th bolts will butt onto only on the end though it's flush at the top um, so the front's done the other thing I'm going to do now then is to have a look at the back end because these formers I actually um, asked on the RCM knee forum don't know what I was thinking really should these be straight across and Simon Chaddock thank you Simon answered um, of course they shouldn't because it was a tubular steel construction with um, cables to pull everything nice and tight and of course they would be flat and the steel tube would also be flat for maximum strength so quite why these are dished I don't know but I should do as Rob does did and I've just got some quarter inch square got a nice hard bit here that's perfect and what I can do is just put a peg on there just to 
um, just to hold it nice and tight to the former. Or is that the latter? <laughs> hold on there like that. Okay, so that's one done. I'll do the other two and come back to you in a minute. 